In this last lesson for grade 11 probability, we're going to have a look at how tree diagrams can help you determine the probability. We've already had a look at two other representations for probability. Firstly, we had a look at Venn diagrams, and Venn diagrams can be used for mutually exclusive or inclusive events, which means they can also be used for independent events. Next, we had a look at two-way contingency tables, which are useful when a set of data is classified according to two different classifications. Today, we are then going to have a look at tree diagrams, and tree diagrams can only be used for inclusive events. These events can be one event that is repeated, or events that happen one after the other, or even simultaneous events. Example 1. A bear contains 5 2 rand coins and 8 5 rand coins. You randomly select 2 coins from the bag simultaneously. What is the probability that you end up with exactly 7 rand? Because you are removing 2 coins simultaneously, a tree diagram will be sensible. This tree diagram will have 2 branches and the first one will be for the first coin that you remove. This will have two options. It can either be a 2 rand or a 5 rand. The second branch will then be for the second coin removed, and this will also have the option of being a 2 rand or a 5 rand. Next, we need to go and add the probabilities. There are 5 2 rand coins and 8 5 rand coins, so there are 13 coins in total. For the first coin to be a 2 rand, there are 5 out of the 13 possibilities. And for this first coin to be a 5 rand, there are 8 out of 13 possibilities. I'm reminding you that a branch should always add up to a probability of 1. And 5 over 13 plus 8 over 13 is 13 over 13, which is 1. When you remove objects simultaneously, the probability works exactly the same as not replacing the first object. If the first coin was a 2 rand coin, we now only have 4 2 rand coins left. So, to draw another 2 rand coin for the second coin, we have 4 out of the remaining 12 left. For the 5 rand out of the 12, there are still 8 to remove. If the first coin was a 5 rand coin, out of the original 8, we now have 7 5 rand coins left. So for the second coin to also be a 5 rand coin, we have 7 left out of the 12. For the second coin to be a 2 rand, we have all 5 2 rand coins out of the 12 that are left. You can test yourself again by adding the 5 over 12 and the 7 over 12, and the 4 over 12 and the 8 over 12, to check that it adds up to 1. Now that our tree diagram is completed, we can go back to the question. Here we are asked what the probability is that you end up with exactly 7 rand. To have 7 rand, you need to remove a 2 rand and a 5 rand, or a 5 rand and a 2 rand. To determine the probability of following one route like this, you need to multiply the probabilities on that route. So, to remove a 2 rand is 5 out of 13, and then multiplied by that is a 5 rand of 8 out of 12. But, we also have the option of a 5 rand, which is 8 out of 13, and then a 2 rand, which is 5 out of 12. So each route's probabilities have to be multiplied and the different routes have to be added up. So the probability to end up with exactly 7 rand is 20 out of 39, which can also be written as a decimal of 0 0.51 or a percentage of 51. Example 2. Calculators are manufactured in a factory. Two machines, A and B, are used. 40% of the calculators are produced by machine A. 
5% of all the calculators produced by machine A are faulty and 10% of all the calculators produced by machine B are faulty. What is the probability that a calculator manufactured in this factory is faulty? Here we have conditional outcomes. This is because the percentage of faulty calculators produced depends on what machine is used. With conditional outcomes, a tree diagram once again helps. Our first branch will be which machine is used. So the calculator can be produced by machine A or machine B. We are given that 40% of the calculators are produced by machine A. So you can choose to keep it as 40% or write it as 4 out of 10. Earlier I mentioned that a branch should always add up to a probability of 1 and that is why machine B will have a probability of 6 out of 10 or 60% of the calculators. The second branch will then be whether these calculators produced are faulty or in a working condition. We were given that 5% of those calculators produced by machine A are faulty and you could write this as 5 over 100 or you could have kept it as 5%. For this branch to add up to one probability, there will be 95% of the calculators manufactured in a working condition. 10% of all the calculators produced by machine B are faulty. So here we are going to have 10 over 100, which you could have simplified to 1 over 10. The rest, meaning the 90%, will work. We are asked what the probability is that a calculator manufactured in this factory is faulty. For this, we will have to follow all possible routes leading to a faulty outcome. This means that the calculator can be manufactured by machine A and then be faulty, or it can be manufactured by machine B and then be faulty. So we're going to determine the probability of each route and then add them. So our first route will be a probability of 4 out of 10 multiplied by 5 out of 100. And to this we add our second route, which will be 6 out of 10 multiplied by 10 over 100. So here we have 1 out of 50 plus 3 out of 50, which will give us a probability of 2 out of 25, or 0, 0,08, or as a percentage, 8% probability that a calculator will be faulty.